Hey everyone, welcome to today's podcast. We're talking about how to be more consistent with your weight loss. This is one of the big questions I get all the time. And the answer is kind of so obvious, you're going to kick yourself in the pants for not realizing it earlier. So I get this all the time. People say, I'm, I'm struggling with consistency when it comes to losing weight. Well, no shit, because you're trying to lose weight in one of the most difficult ways possible, most likely. You're probably trying to jump into a plan 100% of no carbs, no sugar, uh, no eating for 16 hours, uh, 1,200 calories, whatever it is that you want to do to lose weight. It's probably too much and it's too overwhelming for you. So again, the, the question becomes, is the problem that you don't have the ability to be consistent or is the problem that the strategy you're trying to follow is so difficult and such an overcorrection that it's overwhelming you make it almost impossible to be consistent with it. Um, to put this into another kind of example, I like to use the example if you've never played piano before and you really, really want to learn how to play. So you say, I'm going to practice 10 hours a day. Okay, great. Maybe for the first day. And the second day you wake up and your fingers are all cramped up and you hate the piano. And so is it hard to be consistent or is it a bad strategy? And that's the question I want to put to you because if you're really serious about being consistent, I think the smartest way to become more consistent with your weight loss is to ease into whatever strategy you're going to use. So if you're going to intermittent fast, if that's the, what you want to do, instead of having to jump right into 16 hours a day, maybe you start um, 10 hours, get used to that for a week, then move it up to 12 hours, right? And kind of gradually improve. Or if you want to cut down to 1200 calories, maybe you go, you know, if you start with 2,500, you, you go to 2,200, get used to that, then knock it down. So again, what this is going to require is that you shift your focus and you extend your time frame because the way to be consistent is to slowly and systematically get better at what you're doing. Again, most dieters go from nothing to all, right? They're all or nothing. And that overcorrection, that jump into being perfect with things is the big problem of why you're struggling with consistency. So in Program Yourself, then we always say, consistency over intensity. But most people that want to lose weight are choosing intensity over consistency because they just want to lose weight quickly. And so the most extreme thing that they can think about is what's most appealing to them. But you've got to take a step back and look at your weight loss approaches and recognize that it is the intensity of the approach instantly that is preventing you from being able to be consistent. So instead, we flip it around and first work on being consistent and then increasing systematically and strategically the intensity to get the results you're looking for. This is the way you approach pretty much everything else in your life. But when it comes to weight loss, we're so impatient. We've been so conditioned to just be all or nothing that we just go into it way too hard, way overwhelm ourselves. So again, the secret to being more consistent with your weight loss is the obvious thing that you start slowly and you keep progressing and improving and getting better, improve on your skills, improve on your abilities and get better and better day after day until you look back and you say, wow, look what I've done. I have created a firm foundation under me. I have built up my skills the way that I have in other areas of my life. And now I've done it with weight. And if you start thinking this way, you'll find that consistency is way easier than you thought it would be, and you are going to get much better results ultimately. So give this some thought and begin to focus on being more consistent as the main goal rather than intense, and you're going to find that it's a lot easier to be consistent. So I hope this helps you out. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. We'll get into those. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's funny, right? People have different questions around the holiday time. So if it's a, it's a holiday related, uh, let it be. Um, my favorite time of the holiday, right? I, I love the holidays. You've heard me been saying this last couple of days. Um, so I was just talking about consistency, not being all or nothing, being all or something. And the holidays are the perfect time for that. So again, my, my big urging for you is that during the holidays here, if you don't want to think about weight loss, Think about weight loss, but think about it differently, okay? You don't have to do the all or nothing thing. The holiday season is the perfect time to practice being all or something, okay? Not maybe being perfect with your eating, 
but not being totally off the reservation either, being somewhere in the middle. And that is the real path to weight mastery ultimately is to really walk this, in the program we call it the gray area, not being black or white, but being in that gray area. That's where you're going to live most of the time. You're not going to be perfect with your eating all the time. It's never going to happen. Certainly not at the holidays, right? That's the least likely time it's going to happen. And so it's an opportunity for you to start being more um, practical, more realistic, uh, more intelligent, <laughs> more strategic with your weight. How do you enjoy the holidays and stay somewhat on track with your weight? And that may mean, you know, the success for some people in the holidays is to not put any weight on, um, maybe just put a couple pounds on and enjoy yourself. So again, there's a lot of different ways you can go at this. And most people when they're dieting are so black and white, so rigid with their thinking that they don't really open themselves up to all the possibilities available to them. And in doing so, you may find that you follow the exact same pattern year after year after year, where it's like, okay, here comes the holidays. I'm going to opt out. I'm not going to think about my weight at all. I'll pick it back up January 1st. Right. And, and you look and, and the results from that, you know, how are they, how are they, you know? So, um, Yeah. That, that's that you want to be thinking about. Change up how you're thinking about all this, okay? That's what I always say. I mean, that's my specialty is the mindset of weight mastery. And I believe that your mindset is the number one thing impacting your weight and health. More than your genetics, more than your hormones, more than your insulin resistance, your menopause, any of it. I believe your mindset is the number one thing. Uh, that is that is impacting your weight, right? And that's the thing you got to figure out how to how to fix. And ironically, it's the thing you never learn when it comes to your weight. You never learn the mindset piece. You're always being told what to do, and then it's up to you to force yourself to do it. And the same problem is always there, right? The diets change, but you stay the same with the same problem that you don't know how to change your behavior. You don't know how to change your thinking, how you feel, how you're living. And the same problem keeps appearing, you know? So there is no magical diet that's going to come around that just fixes all that, all right? So you got to take it upon yourself. So Sailor says, I love this, the power of mind and emotions. Exactly, right? Because what do you think, folks? I mean, when you look at your own weight loss, I mean, it's not rocket science. What's going on, right? What causes you to make a healthy choice or an unhealthy choice? It's not the knowledge between your ears, you right? You know, you know the cookies aren't good, and some days you eat them, some days you don't. Well, what's the difference? It's usually how you feel, right? Sometimes when you're focused and motivated and feeling good, you make the good decision. And then other days you're pissed off and you're in a bad mood, you're tired and you make the wrong decision. It ain't rocket science, but it's not about the knowledge in your head about which food is good or bad. That's not what is driving your behavior, okay? So you can learn all you want about nutrition. Go visit a dietitian and get the perfect meal plan customized for you, and you still ain't going to follow it because you don't know how to influence how you feel and how you think about things. So it's the same fucking problem <laughs> showing up over and over and over and over, and it's like, but you keep looking for the wrong solution. It, it's It's weird. But uh, that's what I'm here for, <laughs> to help kind of wake you up to that and then obviously give you some solutions. The solution I always give is go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session I give you, watch the training I give you, and realize there's a better way to manage your weight than dieting. Dieting's not a good way, folks. <laughs> I think you know that. Sailor says, I'm healing my inner child and slowly losing weight without diet. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Um, it's always inner work, folks. It's always inner work for me. I sit in front of you 50 pounds lighter than I was. The core reason being, I believe that 30 years ago, I was binge drinking, binge eating because I was in a bad place emotionally. My dad died when I was nine years old. I never dealt with any of that. And so there's this deep pain and anger and sadness and all this negative roiling emotion in me that I did not know how to deal with. And so what I did instead is I used strategies to avoid it binge drink and stuffing myself with all sorts of chemicals so that I didn't have to think about the pain, you see? And so as I started to learn hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, yoga, meditation, same thing. I started to calm down, to bring my awareness inside and start to heal myself. And then that was what I believe 
foundationally kind of healed my foundation and allowed me to start changing my eating, my lifestyle, and ultimately my weight. But it's not enough. If you've been struggling with your weight for decades, the idea that you're going to wake up on some magical Monday morning and just be able to follow a plan perfectly, what sense does that make? I always like to ask this question, what's the difference between you right now and this uh, you, you imagine you're going to wake up on some Monday morning who's going to do everything perfect? What's the What changes? What, just time? I mean, shit, you've been trying to lose weight for decades now. The time alone isn't going to do it. So what's the difference between you now and the you that's just magically going to eat perfect? You, you've got to snap yourself out of this, this imagination, this trance you're in. And it's the false hope syndrome and the diet industry thrives on it. Okay. But you got to wake yourself up from that and realize if I really want to lose weight, I need to do some inner work. I've got to focus on the inside. I believe your weight loss and your weight mastery ultimately is an inside out process. And most dieters just approach it as a completely outside process. I just need to eat different and exercise more. You can't, I mean, come on, there's gotta be more to it than that right? You know what to do to lose weight. You've tried and think about losing weight for a long time and it hasn't happened. So what needs to change? I would suggest it's your mindset. You need to change the way you think about food, your health, your lifestyle, and ultimately yourself. I believe your weight is a physical projection of your mental self. I think you imagine yourself, you identify at the weight that you live or living at, which is to say you weigh exactly what you want to weigh. How about that? We'll just put it real clear. I think you weigh what you want to weigh subconsciously. I don't think you like being overweight, but I think you're familiar and comfortable with it. I think you know how to be an overweight person. You don't like it, but you know how to do it on autopilot. And so, you know, again, I don't think, how do you explain? How do you explain? What do they say? I mean, estimates put 82 to 95% of people that lose weight, put it back on. So how are we, how are we explaining this? It's not genetics. It's not willpower. It's not the plan because they lose the weight and then they put it back on. Now, one of the benefits I have is I've done over 5,000 private weight loss sessions. So I've talked to a lot of people about this exact thing. I say, geez, you lost the weight because everyone's lost weight. And then you put it back on. I said, well, what happened? And I dig deep into it though. I don't just allow, you know, because what do you, what do you say? I don't know. I self self sabotage myself. I don't know. I just got, I get distressed. Or I got that's those aren't answers. So I go deeper into what happened. Why'd you lose the way and put it back on? And what I always get to is some form of I didn't feel like myself. Yeah, I was glad that I lost the weight, but I didn't feel like myself. I felt like a stranger. I felt like someone I didn't know. And he starts to recognize that. Geez, we all have this self image. We all have this identity that we have of ourselves. And we live up or down to that self-image. And most likely, you've never sat down and created the self-image you wanted to have. You've just absorbed it from the environment, the experiences you've had, the people you've been surrounded by. And you now think of yourself as an overweight person, an overeater, a person who has no willpower. You've got this identity that you're an overweight person. And that needs to shift if you're going to change your weight long term. So it says, so true. Subconsciously, I feel I was getting bigger as a defense to protect myself from toxic family. Exactly. Exactly. We always do everything we do. We do for a positive intention. Okay. It may have a negative consequence ultimately, but in the moment, we always do things for a positive intention. And once you recognize that to me, that's the doorway you walk through to freedom. Okay. Is to realize instead of just always beating yourself, oh, what a, I'm an asshole. What an asshole I am for eating those cookies. What a jerk. You bad perk. Cause I know you're so mean to yourself. Right. And you're always beating yourself up and always berating yourself for the behaviors, but you're not looking at the behaviors and saying, why am I doing this? What's the positive intention behind it? And once you understand that, once you realize, oh, I am overeating to protect myself from a toxic family. Once you realize that, now you're in a completely different place where you can start to find the solution. Right. Because it's just you're eating. Your eating is just a strategy you're using for a positive intention. What's up, Karen? Um, and so I'll give you an example. Emotional eating. Right. Emotional eating. People say, I got to stop emotional eating. No, you don't have to stop emotional eating. You got to figure out what you're emotionally eating for. 
Okay. So if you're eating because it gets to be night and you feel lonely and depressed and you're using food as a way to deal and manage with that loneliness and that depression, then the food's serving a positive intention. It's doing something good. So you need to figure out what the positive intention is so that you can begin to ask the question, what is a better way for me to deal with the loneliness and the depression that does not involve food? Because the food's not fixing the problem. It's just managing the symptoms. And until you find a real solution to whatever the, the food is doing for you, you're always going to struggle with it. But once you find a real genuine solution, especially to manage your emotions, for example, to deal with a toxic family that doesn't involve food, now you're on the path to freedom. Now you're on the path of mastering your weight for good. Do you understand? That's what I'm talking about here too, which again, let me reinforce that, that, you know, so often people are fixated on weight loss, just the process of losing weight as if getting to the goal weight is the finish line. It is not folks. The end into your goal weight is the starting line. Cause how long do you want to live at your goal weight for forever? Okay. So you've got to upgrade your goal from just wanting to lose weight to wanting to get to your goal weight and then living the rest of your life at your goal weight on near autopilot. That's the secret. That's the path you want. And that's the real goal you want to achieve. And so you need to articulate it specifically. Okay. We can't just say, I want to lose weight. You've lost weight before. Are you glad you lost weight or are you mad that you put it back on? You see the weight loss in and of itself is not enough. That's not what you want. You want to live at your goal weight. And if you make that the goal from the beginning, and very specifically, that's the goal, you have a much better chance of achieving it. But all you're doing is you're just, I don't want to lose the weight. I just want to lose the weight. I just want to lose the weight. I don't give a shit what I got to do. I don't give a shit. Just tell me what to do. I don't give a shit. I just want to lose the weight. A, that's a lie. But, but B, that's not even the goal you want. You don't just want to lose the weight. You want to live at your goal weight. Please make that distinction in your mindset, okay? Because once you recognize that I want to live at my goal weight, what your brain starts doing is it starts choosing better strategies. When your goal is, I just want to lose the weight, your brain says, okay, well, shit, it's just a short-term thing. I want to lose weight quickly. What's the most extreme thing I can do to lose weight? And that's what you keep doing. You keep cycling through extreme rigid plans that you can't stick with. And so even if you lose the weight, you can't maintain it because you can't live that way long-term. Well, as soon as you set the goal, I want to live at my goal weight forever on near autopilot. Now you reorient your brain to figure out strategies that help you achieve that goal. And the strategies to losing weight quickly compared to the strategies of losing weight for good and living at your goal weight are two completely different strategies. And this is where the, the fork in the road starts for you, hopefully, is that you start to choose strategies based on living at your goal weight forever on your autopilot, as opposed to extreme strategies where you lose weight quickly. So I hope that makes sense, you know, because it makes all the difference in the world mindset wise. It's a, it's a game changer. It's a completely different process because it's a completely different goal, you know? So that's one of the key things you want to do. All right. So keep that clearly in mind. And again, if you are new to my world, make sure you go to my bio, click the link at the hypnosis session and watch the training. Okay. Three steps to master your weight. Losing weight's a shitty goal. It's an impoverished goal. Okay. So you need to have a better goal, you know, demand more for yourself. You don't just want to lose weight. I know you think I just want to lose the weight and then I'll figure it out. I know that's what you're thinking, but it's a lie. Right? How many times you lost the weight, right? How many times you lost the weight and you put it back on? You know, you've, you've got to wake up from that. You're, you're almost in a trance. <clears throat> and as soon as you do, though, everything changes. And I mean that, you know, um, it all changes. But you got to have a different goal. I mean, you guys can hear it. They're working on my roof and I can hear it. There's a lot of noise. I don't know if it's coming through. But uh, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> so it says, yeah, the simple goal of losing weight is like a yo-yo diet. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Exactly. <laughs> Sharon says, thanks for being here. Even the roofers doing their work. Yeah, I keep working, you know, not on the back too, but I, I kind of avoided all their, their loudest work. Um, and they're almost done, actually. But yeah, when well, they get the, the compressor guns and, and all the rest of it going. But uh, yeah, I don't care. I'm like the post office, right? We, we're just uh, showing up no matter what the situation is. Um, 
Yeah, Sailor, you're right though. Yeah, the simple goal of losing weight is like a yo-yo diet because what happens, the big thing here is that when you just set the goal of like losing weight, what happens is your brain interprets that as a temporary thing, right? And this is one of the big challenges you all have if you think like a dieter is that you think about your weight loss like a temporary thing. You say, oh, I'm gonna diet until, until I lose the weight. The main goal is just to lose the weight. And so it's this temporary thing. That's why I say, if you upgrade your goal to, I wanna get to my goal weight, and then I want to live at my goal weight for the rest of my life on your autopilot. It, it, that, we're not just talking semantics. Your subconscious mind is very literal, you know, so you need to program it very specifically. And so saying that I want to live at my goal weight for the rest of my life on near autopilot, it orients your brain to come up with, you know, it's a different goal, which causes your brain to find different strategies. Okay. But the other goal of just wanting to lose weight Again, if you think it's temporary, then it's easy for me to say, well, it's only, it's only going to be a couple of weeks, a couple of months. I can do anything for that long. You know, and that's the mindset you're probably trapped in. I can do anything to lose weight for a couple of months, you know, which isn't true anyways, <laughs> by the way. I, I'll i tell you, man, a dieter, any dieter, it's like, oh, just tell me what to do. I don't give a shit what I got to do. I just want to lose the weight. It's like, stop it. Stop, stop it. Of course you care what you got to do. You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? Oh, okay. Eat a thousand calories. See how long you, you stick with that. You know, we, we've got to like be more honest with ourselves, but, um, you know, that, that's a piece. I always say, I mean, a, a huge part of programming yourself then is developing awareness. I just, I, I, I'm working with a client and we're maybe six months into working together and which is always a fun time because now we start really getting into things, you know what I mean? Sometimes. And, uh, it was, you know, she goes, God, a lot of my behavior is trance-like. Exactly. Our behavior is very trance-like. We're not aware of what we're doing, right? Let's just use like, like writing, right? For example, when you write, you think you know how to write, but do you? Do you? Because you know how to write. Can you just do it with the other hand then? No, your hand knows how to write, right? It's kind of like walking. Yeah. You, do you know how to walk? Or does your body know how to walk? God, explain to me how you get across the room. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you quickly realize, oh shit. Yeah, I don't really know how to walk. Like, I, I do know, but I don't know. And so I like to make the distinction between conceptual knowledge and behavioral knowledge. As right? so it comes to walking and writing, yeah, you have a lot of behavioral knowledge, but you don't really even know how you're doing it. You don't know which muscles are tightening up and which ones are relaxing to allow you to walk across the room. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a very complex behavior. And so um, all of our behavior is very complex and it's very automatic. It's very subconscious in nature. It's very trance-like, which is to say that you have very little awareness of why you even do what you do. I'm going to make a video on this. I just had this idea last night. Like all behavior is like a chain reaction and it's starting way over here and you're aware of it over here, but it really started over here. You know, so I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about in the weight loss context. I get so many people that come in and say, well, everything's going great. Breakfast and lunch is great. And then afternoon and dinner, everything's falling apart. So I need help there. I need more willpower there. So, okay, well, what are you eating for breakfast and lunch? Nothing. What would you like to eat for dinner? <laughs> and after nothing. Well, you can't do that. That's not a real strategy. Okay. So the problem over here in the afternoon is not where it was created. Right. So the solution is not to have more willpower over here. That's impossible. You can't have more willpower. First of all, you starved yourself all day. Now you're starving and you got no willpower because your willpower runs on glucose, runs on food. And so you starve yourself, your willpower. Goes, whoop. Okay. And so the answer is not to have more willpower over here. The answer is to have more strategy at breakfast and lunch so that you nourish yourself. So that by the time you get to the afternoon, you're not starving. You are mentally prepared and able to make the right food choices, you know? So again, understanding this ability to zoom out and look at our behavior and see the whole picture allows us to be more strategic with the solutions that we figure out and implement. Because right now you got one tool and one tool only, and it's willpower. And you're just trying to use willpower to force yourself to eat better. How's that working for you? How has that worked for you? How's that working for everyone you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like not well. It doesn't work well. Um, I'm in menopause, having a hard time losing weight. Okay. So when you've got a physical challenge, <laughs> is that loud? I don't know if that's as loud to you as it is to me. They got, they got all these machines out here. 
and they're killing my lawn. I did, I redid on my whole lawn and they're driving all over. It's, it's killing me, but the roof looks awesome. So, hey, whatever. Um, okay. So, when you got menopause, insulin resistance, hormone issues, thyroid issues, PCOS, Hashimoto's, whatever physical challenge you may have, these are real. And when you're in that situation, I think it's extra important. I think it's important for everyone, but it's extra important that you have a lifestyle piece of your puzzle. Okay. So I'm going to help you a vitamin. No, never a vitamin. Never. There's never one answer. I'm telling you this now. And again, I don't blame you for this dieters. You we've all been conditioned to think that there's just one salute. Oh, oh, there's a new berry from the jungles of the Amazon. That's going to fix everything. There's this new supplement. That's going to fix everything. There's this new, you know, probiotic yogurt. That's going to fix everything for you. It's never, ever, never just one thing. You need a holistic, comprehensive solution to your weight and health. Always, always and forever. Okay. And so when you've got a physical challenge though, like menopause, we need to really extra focus on the lifestyle piece. Um, cutting calories a lot of times is not going to be enough. We need to counteract the physical challenges of menopause, insulin resistance, et cetera, with a lifestyle approach. Now, what do I mean when I say lifestyle? In the program, I mean eight specific habits, okay, in order of importance, proper sleep, hydration, relaxation, breathing, nourishment, movement, meditation, gratitude. Because when you start to implement these things in your life, you start to impact yourself physically in a positive way in the same way that menopause and some of these other things can impact us in a negative way, okay? They affect us biochemically, hormonally, um, all, all different ways, physically, positively. And they set us foundationally to succeed with our weight. Okay. As opposed to struggle with it. So again, when you have menopause, I think it's really important to focus on the lifestyle pieces that I just mentioned. Um, you know, it says, think it's all placebo effect. Um, what do you mean? Like with the menopause? Cause menopause is real. I mean, real, there are real shifts in, in our bodies as we get older and especially for women, you know, more, more so, um, these are real things to deal with, but I can tell you, I sit in front of you as someone who's done over 5,000 private weight loss sessions, I've been doing this professionally for 20 years and 90% of my clients have been women in some stage of menopause, <laughs> peri -post during, you know, and so they are all losing weight. So you can absolutely lose weight being menopausal, being insulin resistant, being, you know, thyroid issues, hormone issues, PCOS, Hashimoto, any of it, any situation, you can still lose weight because ultimately your weight comes down to the average calories you're consuming and you're in control of that. Okay. Now, yes, there are other physical factors that can make it easier or harder, but primarily those factors are running through hunger signaling more than they are some thing happening to you that's causing you to hold on to the weight. Although that, that can happen a bit too, but it's primarily again, a mindset thing. It's impacting your eating more than anything else. So once you realize that again, you realize, you know, it's easier for some, some people lose weight quicker than others. You know, again, if you ever look at like weight studies where they put people in the me metabolic labs, where they have a group of people and they're, they're measuring every calorie in and calorie out during the week, the month, couple months, what you'll notice is there's always a big discrepancy in how much weight's lost. Everyone's losing weight, but it's all different ranges. And so again, you may lose weight quickly or slowly. You know, and, and that may change over time depending on menopause or different factors. Okay. So the important thing to remember though is that everyone can still lose weight. You may lose it slower than your neighbor. You may lose it slower than you used to. Okay. But you can still lose weight. And if you lose weight slowly, you lose weight slowly. Tough shit. I mean, so what? Again, who cares? If you have the goal of I want to get to my goal weight and live the rest of my life in my goal weight on your autopilot, who gives a shit if it takes you a couple months or a couple years to get to the goal weight, we're going to get to the destination and live there for the rest of our lives. If you can wrap your head around that idea, you're setting yourself up for ultimate success. If you're looking at, okay, well, I'll, I'll do the keto thing as long as I lose two, three pounds a week. And then the first week you only lose a pound, you're just totally destroyed and you can't keep going because you're so demotivated. You know, you, you've got to understand that your mindset and how you're framing this whole process has a huge impact on your motivation and on your ability to stick with the plan and get the results you want. But you're looking at your weight loss very conditionally. And very rarely in life when we're conditional about something, do we get good results, 
right? The results in life come from when you stick with it, even when it's hard. Even when you're not getting the results you want, you stay with it. That's how it is at everything. Relationships, you know, any personal development stuff you're doing, anything you do, your work, all of it. What, every day is great? Of course not, you know? So you need to have a strategy that's built for the long term. And dieting is a strategy built for the short term. And it only works if you're getting amazing results. I see people, they'll lose, you know, they're in their head because what's everyone got? You know, a lot of people walking around, like, oh, two pounds a week. Uh, I don't want to kill myself, Jim. I just want to lose two pounds a week. Oh, that's it? Just two pounds a week? <laughs> As if that's not a lot? You know what I mean? Like, uh, people are crazy. People are crazy, especially when it comes to weight loss. And it's not really your fault. It's not that people are crazy so much. It's that we have had a lifetime, all of us, every one of us, we've had a lifetime of diet conditioning. You know what I mean? Just exposed to millions of diet ads in our lives. And it affects the way we think now about weight loss. And these diets don't want you to lose weight anyways. So it's not even good conditioning. Because um, most of the big diets that you are referencing subconsciously are all owned by big food companies. I'm reading a book. Um, what's it called? Processed People? Ultra Processed People. But it's about ultra processed foods. And man, it's like... See, because what you don't think, right, I, I like to say this often and, and, and regularly and loudly, is that you think of the food companies, you have like a positive, warm association to the food companies, right? But like when you think about cigarette companies, not so much, right? You don't like cigarette companies. You, they're shitty, right? Because they're trying to kill you. Well, hey, guess what? The food companies are trying to kill you too. The, and by the way, the, the food companies, the cigarette companies, the same companies anyways, Right. You know, Nabisco and RJ Reynolds are literally merged to the same company. You know, the parent company of Kraft is, uh, is, uh, uh, Philip Morris, you know? So it's like literally the, the food companies are the cigarette companies and they're trying to make the exact same. It's the same philosophy. They make the most addictive product possible. Um, they use the most aggressive marketing that they can come up with. And then they're sitting on the science of how bad it is for you. So you don't know. I always say this, but in 20 years, they're going to have warning labels on food, just like they do cigarettes. And you just, you heard it here first. So it's up to you. You want to wait the 20 years, they put the warning labels, you want 20 more years of putting this bullshit in your body. That's up to you. You know, people knew it was harder to get to the science back in the sixties uh, for the cigarettes, but it was there. The science is there now with how damaging these, these foods are ultra processed foods, which you're probably eating 50, 60, 70% of a day. These things are, are just as dangerous to your health as cigarettes are to your lungs. You don't think of it that way because it's not front and center. You know, but you got you to seek it out because, hey, what do you want? So it's a war, right? It's every man for himself in this culture. <laughs> it just is, right? I don't want it to be this way. It's every person for themselves, you know? And there's a lot of people making money off of you dying and being sick and unhappy. I always say that. I mean, you look at the economy, like how much of the economy is built around you being overweight, unhealthy, and unhappy. It's a lot. It's a lot, you know? So you're on your own to some degree. And that's, I don't, I've sounded so negative. I don't mean to do that. But, you know, it's like getting your weight under control is getting your health under control. And getting your health under control in the culture we live in now, it's like a war. It really is. You've got to approach it that way, you know? Because they're, I mean, they are, you, you don't even know. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Um, there's a book called Salt, Sugar, Fat. And in that book, he talks about the processed food industry. And again, like in your mind, you imagine like these foods that you buy, cheese, it's Nabisco, all this bullshit. You, in your mind, you imagine like a bunch of chefs, you know, working away in a kitchen on recipes to come up with the most delicious thing, you know? But that is not what's happening. They're creating these foods in labs by chemists. Do you know what I mean? Like, like they're, they're trying to make the most addictive product possible and they don't give a shit about your health, you know? And so it, it's a war in the sense that you're being conditioned and manipulated constantly to put shit into your body that is literally going to take 10, 20 years off your life. Oh, those are the worst years. God damn you. Don't say that, you know? And then the other side is that, okay, fine. You want to die 10 years early. You don't want those 10 years. Fine. But it's going to affect all those years in between until then anyways. You know, this is the thing you, you are constantly being conditioned to minimize the effects the food is having on you, which is why you're not even motivated to lose weight and you're not motivated to lose weight. If you're overweight and you're not actively losing weight, it's because you're not motivated.
let's not get confused about it. You don't want to lose weight. You wish you'd lose weight, right? You wish you'd magically start losing weight tomorrow, but you don't really want to lose weight. And you've got to recognize that because that's the very first thing. That's the first hurdle you got to clear to even get in the game of losing weight is you got to get motivated. And to get motivated, you got to realize I'm not even fucking motivated. You're right, Jim. I'm not motivated. Great. Great. At least now we're, we're in the real world. Because if you're walking around saying, I want to lose weight more than anything in the world and I'm not losing it. That's not true. And worse than it's not being true is that it's making you feel powerless, right? You say, I want to lose weight more than anything in the world. All I want more than anything in the world is to lose weight. And I'm not losing it. What's that mean? How do you interpret that subconsciously? It means I can't lose weight. And that's not true. It's not true. You can lose weight. You absolutely can lose weight. 100%. I don't give a shit. Menopause, Hashimoto's, PCOS, insulin resistance. I don't care. You come to me with any physical issue and you can still lose weight. Might take you a little longer. You might lose weight a little slower, but you can lose weight. So if you're not losing weight, it's because you're not motivated. And you're not motivated because you minimize what's at stake here. Because you've had a lifetime of diet marketing in every single diet ad you've seen, and we've all seen millions of them. Every single diet ad's the same template. It's the before and after picture, how long it takes to go from one to the other. And so what that has done is that has trained you to subconsciously think about weight loss motivation in terms of, I wanna look better. I wanna look better. Now that's superficial right? It's an aesthetic thing. It's just a superficial thing. And that's why your motivation is superficial. It doesn't last because it's not real motivation because you don't really give a shit how you look. It's not hardwired into us to really care that much. We've evolved over millions of years in an environment where there was no pictures, there was no mirrors, um, right? There's no scales. So we don't have a lot of neural wiring to really give a shit about what we look like weight wise. So it's not a good motivator. So if you're wondering why you're not motivating, you just want to look better. You, you think about looking better all day long, but you're not losing any weight. It's because that's not motivating enough. You know, maybe if you're a model or an athlete, maybe if like, if, if there's more wrapped up in your appearance than the average person, maybe you can tap into more motivation, you know, but if you're just a regular person has a job, take care of your kids or doing whatever, and you're overweight and your main motivation, I want to look better. And you've been wanting to look better for 40 years and you're still not losing weight. It's because that's not motivating to you. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's not, it's not even hard to realize, but you never think of it that way because you're just, you believe it should be enough. You believe wanting to look better should be enough. You think about it all day long, but if it's not getting you the results you want, then it's not working. Do you know what I mean? Humans have a tremendous capacity to delude themselves. You know, and you convince yourself you're super motivated, even though you're not getting the results. And then what happens is you start to say, well, I guess I can't lose weight. No matter what I do, I can't lose the weight. And that begins the, that's the beginning of your apathy, of your powerlessness. Or when you start believing no matter what I do, I can't lose the weight because that's not true. So how do you get more motivated? You got to go deeper, you know, and that's why I, I get nervous about this body positivity movement. I, I, no one should feel shame for their bodies. It's not helpful. Okay. But at the same time, we can't, we can't just separate weight from health, weight from lifespan, weight from quality of life. Now, again, I'm not talking visually. I don't give a shit what you look like. I'm talking about what the fuck's going on in here. You think if you're stuffing your body with ultra processed foods all day long, spiking glucose levels, crashing them. You don't think that's going to affect your quality of life, your energy, your moods, your ability to take action, your lifespan, your ability to be a good parent, partner, worker, business owner, whatever you do in your life. Not how you look. You don't think carrying an extra 40, 50, 60 pounds around every day isn't going to have an impact on your physical comfort, your ability to thrive. You know what I mean? So we got to, we got to go deeper. That's how you get motivated. Realize what the fuck's at stake here. And it's everything. It's everything because your weight, never mind how you look, it's how it's affecting how you're operating, how the system is working, the emotions you're feeling day in and day out. Cause I know you're obsessed with the weight, but you're obsessed with feeling like shit about it. 
So you don't realize what's, what's possible. What's possible is you can feel way better physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, that's how you start to get motivated for real. I'll give you an example, right? Because I know it's hard. I'm motivated. No, you're not. You know? <laughs> what would real motivation feel like? Okay. There's a unpleasant thought experiment, but it does, it, it does the job, right? Is if the person that you care the most about in your life, the person that you love the most in your life was kidnapped. And the kidnapper said, if you don't lose weight this next month, you'll never see this person again. How hard would it be for you to lose weight that month? Wouldn't be hard at all. How tempted would you be in that scenario from buy ice cream or cookies or chips? You wouldn't at all. Why? Because there's a lot at stake. You would be so focused on getting that person back in your life that you wouldn't be tempted at all. Now, it's an unpleasant thought experiment. It's not real, but it's just to prove the point that you ain't motivated. That's the first hurdle you got to overcome, you know? So in Program Yourself Thin, um, again, there's three blueprints you got to master. Mindset, uh, I call it the Weight Mastery Pyramid. The bottom level is mindset, lifestyle, eating. You got to figure out how to motivate yourself. And the truth is you don't know how to motivate yourself. You never learned how to do it. So what do you do? You just rely on spontaneous motivation. And you know where your motivation comes from when it shows up? It comes from the pain. You step on the scale. You see the picture of yourself. You catch your reflection. The clothes don't fit. Someone says something shitty to you. You got a doctor's appointment coming. You got to face it. And now you feel overwhelming pain. And I said, that's it. I got to lose this weight. And then in that state, you choose some extreme plan that you can't stick with for more than a day or a couple of weeks. And then you just repeat the same cycle over and over and over and over. Okay. So you got to learn how to motivate yourself. But once you're truly motivated, guess what? The whole process becomes way easier, but you're not motivated. That's why I say it's the first hurdle you got to overcome, you know, and you got to get clear on this because you can't fix something if you don't know it's broken. And if you're walking around thinking I'm a level 10 motivation, and I'm still not losing weight. You're lying to yourself. But worse than that is you're seeing the world through funhouse mirrors, glasses. You know what I mean? You're not seeing things as they are. And what happens then is you start making up crazy stories. I can't lose weight. Um, I'm a menopause, so I can't lose weight. I got insulin resistant. I can't lose weight. I got these weird genetics. My, my grandmother's overweight, so I, I can't lose weight. And you start telling yourself this story and you start believing it. And next thing you know, you're so apathetic. You find yourself thinking about weight loss 24 hours a day, never losing it. You know, so you got to wake up from that. And the, and the way you wake up from it is, is to recognize the real problem. And the first real problem isn't that you can't be consistent. It's that you're not motivated and you're not motivated because you just keep thinking. I have someone in the program. I don't know if she's here. It, it, I don't know if you're still here, Jody, but I remember Jody was saying like a big thing for her. I just want to wear a bathing suit, you know? And it's like, if you're, if you think, if you think, if you're in your forties, fifties, sixties, and you've been trying to lose weight for decades. And if you think the goal of wanting to wear a fucking bathing suit to the beach is going to be enough motivation for you to do what it takes to master your weight, you are it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work because you deep down don't give a fuck about wearing a bathing suit at the beach. You've gone 20 years, not wearing the bathing suit at the beach. You're okay with it. Now you figured out how to live, not wearing a bathing suit to the beach. That's not enough motivation. I can tell I did this shit. I did. I'm sitting here. I sit in front of you as someone, I dropped 50 pounds, 30 years ago. I've maintained the same weight loss, but over the years, I'm like, I want to have a six pack. Oh, thanks for the rose. Um, I want to have a six pack. I'm a six pack, you know? And it's like, and I never did it though. You know, I never got a six pack. I'm like, what, what's going on? This is so weird. I'm like, I've mastered my eating. I've mastered, my life. I've mastered all this stuff. Why don't I have a six pack? And then all of a sudden, after like 15 years of it, it dawned on me. And I said, cause I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about a six pack. I'm a married guy. I got my shirt off an hour a year. Why would I want, why would I want to put all that work into having a six pack? I don't give a shit. And you don't give a shit about wearing the bathing suit to the beach. If anything, you don't even want to wear the bathing suit to the beach because you don't want the attention. The good tension, bad tension, you don't want any of it. You're, you're happy with the status quo. And so you've got to ruffle yourself up, but it ain't through how you're going to look primarily. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, wanting to look better is, it is a motivator, but it ain't going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. You don't believe me? Mm. <laughs> Someone says, best way to lose weight is to not think about it. I haven't been thinking about it and lost three kilograms. <clears throat> I 
I think there's truth to that, but I think that people need a strategy. Okay, well, what do I do then? I think you're right, but I think that there needs to be a strategy how to do that. And that's what program yourself then is, you know? So how do I do? I help people do exactly that. Um, I always say this, it's funny, like, you know, my private coaching, people pay me $25,000 to work with me privately. Okay. And the irony is that when I'm working with people privately, it's we're really, we're never talking about weight loss, really. You know what I mean? Like, like it's weird. It, it may sound strange. Um, but the weird thing is, and I'll, so I'll tell you how to go about this. Cause I think you're right on the money with that. And, and I, but, but then people read that and I said, well, what do I do though? You know, and that's always the problem with weight loss is that you kind of have an idea what, what you're supposed to do, but you have no idea how to get yourself to do it. You know, I always say this, that when it comes to weight loss, this is like this with a lot of things, but especially weight loss is every weight loss plan out there is telling you what to do. And no one's ever shown you how to get yourself to do it. And so I really find myself filling in a, a very big void in the weight loss world of actual practical information to actually help you to get yourself to do the things that are going to get the results you want. So when we want to, in an ideal world, when it comes to the weight, is we want to make the weight loss secondary. We want to, just like this person says, we want to put the weight loss so it's not the main focus of our mind, but we're still losing weight. So how do you do that? The best way I've seen is that you take your weight loss and you wrap it in personal development. You make this not about weight loss. You make it about becoming the best version of yourself possible. That's what we're doing. And that reframe is so important because now if you think about everything I was just saying about motivation, now what happens is it's not just about fucking looking better in a bathing suit because you don't give a shit about that really. But what you do care about is what? certain relationships with your partner, with your kids, with your parents, with your family, with your friends. Okay. Usually relationships are one of the top things. Um, maybe it's your work, right? Maybe work's really important for you, but what's really important in your life? Like what things are really important? I don't want you to make them important. I want you to look at your life and say, what things have I consistently done? What things when I'm feeling like shit, do I still show up, right? You wake up for work. There's plenty of times you don't want to go to work, but you still do it because you value it. There's times when you're a kid, you don't want to die. Ah, shit, I got to make up dinner. I got to take care of them. You don't want to do it, but you do it, okay? Those are the things you're most motivated about. And that's what we want to build your weight loss motivation around. How do we do that? Because your ability to be the parent, the partner, the daughter, son that you want to be is directly related to your weight. Hey, Jim, they don't give a shit how I look. I'm not talking about how you look. I'm talking about who you are. And so when you are eating healthier, when you're living a healthier lifestyle, you become a better version of yourself. What does that mean? It's not about how you look. It's that you have more energy. You're more calm. You're more grounded. You're more centered. You're more emotionally balanced. You're more positive. You're more hopeful. You're able to be there for the other person more. You're able to provide more. You become a better version of yourself. This is going to be a lot more motivating for you because you already value these things and now you're going to be able to be better at them. Do you see what I mean? A lot of people, what they try and do with the weight loss is they try, okay, tomorrow's Monday. Tomorrow, all of a sudden, weight loss is really important to me. No, it's not. It hasn't been and it's not going to be. You need to take what's already important to you, like what you're already truly motivated about, and you need to weave the weight loss around that. And you do that by not focusing on the visual of how you're going to look different. That's a little cherry on top. So again, we keep that. That is motivating. It's something. It's not enough. What we want to get to is what's already important to you in your life. What's the most important stuff in your life? And how would being thinner and healthier and happier help those things? That's the secret to tapping into real motivation is to find the things that you're already motivated about and realize that you could operate at a fucking way higher level. You run a business. You don't think you could run a business way more effectively if you were energized and felt lighter and felt more positive and hopeful and successful and confident and all the rest of it. Come on, you know? So it's like, as we start to reframe this process of one, I just want to look different. No, I ain't going to do it. Now, again, you know, I'll get into this a little bit. You, you know, you want to lose weight so much, but the truth is you don't know anything about motivation. Do you know there's a science of motivation? You know? And so part of that science talks about extrinsic, intrinsic motivation. And so what the diet industry has conditioned you to do and what you are currently doing is you're trying to motivate yourself through extrinsic motivation. It's the weakest form of motivation. 
And so what you need to do is you need to develop the intrinsic motivation. And this is the motivation you have to take care of your kids, to take care of your partner, to go to work every day, right? The things that you do consistently, you're intrinsically motivated to do them. That's the deepest form of motivation. And you've never learned how to create that motivation for your weight loss and health. Your motivation for your weight loss and health is always this superficial one, extrinsic. It's based on looking better. So other people are going to know what? Then on top of that, you know, for most people, especially if you're a woman, it's all, that's all conflicted anyways. You know how many women I've worked with? It's like, oh, I want to lose weight more than anything in the world. Then we get into it and it turns out, you know what? I don't want to lose weight because I don't want the attention from men. I've been, I've been assaulted in the past. I don't want to, I feel more secure with the weight. I'm using the weight as a, as a security measure. Well, if that's the case, then we better resolve that or else you're never going to lose the weight because the weight's serving a pot. It's keeping you safe. It's keeping you alive. Maybe that's how you think of it. You know, there's these deeper reasons why you're struggling with the weight way beyond the fact that you don't have the willpower to not eat a cookie. Do you know what I mean? Like there's way deeper shit going on here. Don't you believe that? <laughs> you know, um, what's up a deal? Uh, Kuro Tiger. I had 10 mini cupcakes on my plate yesterday. I thought about you. All right. What'd you think about me? What'd you do with them? What'd you do? What'd you do with the mini cupcakes? 10 mini cupcakes on a plate. All right. What was going on? I, I would love to dig into that. I'd love to hear that story, <clears throat> which by the way, right. That, that's, ah, I, I just wish I could work with everyone on the planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, cause you know what we do in program yourself. Then we have a group coaching, you know, and we, we talk about things. So say someone, Okay, so what would you do, Carol? Did you, did you eat them? What'd you say? You say, would a thin person eat this many? And what'd you do? I'm, I'm fascinated. But I'm always fascinated by either thing. So I have 10 mini cupcakes and I ate them all. Great. Let's let's dig into it. What happened? You know what I mean? And then I said, what would a thin person do? And I ate one of them. Great. That's awesome, dude. So I put two back. Hey, great, right? So, so that's super. We're, we're always learning from what we did. If you can get yourself out of the mindset of like the all or nothing thinking, the, oh, I was good, I was bad. No, we use utilization. We're always winning or learning. And so everything's great. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're on the path we want to be on. And sometimes we're not on the path and we want to figure out how to get on the path. But it's all solution oriented. So great job, Kiro. So the next time, <laughs> good. I, I, I love when people say that. That's my goal. I want to be in your mind. That's what I do. I do that for my clients on a very intense level. Again, there's hypnosis sessions every morning. You listen, they're five minutes long, but it's just to put my voice in your head, the messages, these ideas of thinking to help you create this mindset. I do these podcasts every day for free to get inside your head. So you have a positive, encouraging, supportive, weight mastery voice in your head. Yeah, eating with awareness. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. I do do a podcast, Sarah. It's called Program Yourself Then. It's on all the platforms, right? Go listen to it. And listen, can you leave a review, folks? <laughs> can, can you leave me a review to help me? I was realizing the other day, I was like, I don't have any, too many reviews. I need more. I know people are listening to it. Um, please help me out with that. It helps kind of push it out, you know, with the whole algorithm and stuff. Because um, I'm, I'm putting the work in for you all, right? I'm doing it for you. I'm doing this for free. Yeah, I've got a coaching program too, if you're really serious. I got a version of it that doesn't have any coaching with it that's more affordable. So I'm doing everything I can to help you guys out. Um, but, but help me out with a review, please. Um, if you take two seconds to do that, it does help me out. Um, but yeah, that's what, what all my, my clients say is that I, that I get in their head because what do you got in your head now? Eh, food marketing, diet marketing and the diets, right? Well, I always know I say this and I want to say it again. The diets that you're referencing to lose weight are all owned by the food companies, right? Did you know Weight Watchers was owned by Heinz? Jenny Craig was owned by Nestle. Atkins Food Products owned by the same company that owns Onions, Pretzels, and Cinnabon. Um, Slim Fast owned by the same company that owns Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, Unilever, right? So uh, these companies aren't trying to help you lose weight. They're trying to get you coming and going. They're trying to fill your head with mush so that you never lose the weight for good. And you keep coming back to their foods, keep coming back to the diets. So I like to think that I'm one of the few voices out there that's genuinely, genuinely trying to help you, you know? And that's why I do this for free. My mission is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight. Because to me, weight's life and death. A dad died at 54 of a heart attack, you know? So this isn't just about looking good in a bathing suit. It's about living as long as you can and looking good in a bathing suit. That's fine too. You know what I mean? Again, I'm not against that. I'm against only that. That's not going to be enough. That's that's why. If it was enough, I'd tell you just do that. You know what I mean? Again, I don't, the only thing I care about is you being able to get the results you want. That's all I care about. 
And so I do this podcast every single day. So I get people all the time to just listen to the podcast, you know? I'm on that delusional kick now. Perfect. Perfect. Right. I just had the conversation with someone yesterday. She's a private client of mine and she is extremely um, logical and rational and very type A ish sort of person. And so we we're talking about the value of imagination because the program yourself then um, course, one of the main things we use is the um, program yourself then technique, which is a self hypnosis technique, which will use imagination. But here's the thing. If you're going to be so reality based that the only thing that's real is reality. Well, how, if that was the case, then how would we ever change? Right. If you're overweight and you're just so reality based and imagination is bullshit, it's all just pretend. And the only thing that matters is reality. Okay. Well, so if you're an overeater and you're overweight, then that's it. That's all you're going to be ever. Well, that can't be true because people lose weight all the time. People change all the time. So the reality now is not the reality that has to be forever. And that for me was one of the biggest shifts ever, 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 ever that I made is that, um, you know, it's, it's really important that I realized I could change, you know, that was, that I remember, I remember I was listening to Tony Robbins and I, I remember running home. I literally, I was 19 and I remember going home and I was like, Hey, you know, you can change your life. You can do things differently. I felt so trapped. This was just huge for me. Yeah. Yeah, the delusion of reality. Well, listen, I mean, there, there's a, we don't want to be, I think law of attraction, <laughs> don't get mad at me, folks. I think law of attraction goes too far into delusion. You know what I mean? But so I'll tell you the difference between like law of attraction and program yourself then. Um, with law of attraction, they kind of just go to the outcome you want and just stay there, right? With program yourself then, we will, we will tap into the outcome we want to feel that, but we spend most of our time focusing on the, behaviors that are going to make that outcome happen, you know? And so it's the nuts and bolts. It's the granular details of how do I get myself to be thin and healthy? What are the granular things I got to do? How do I eat the breakfast that makes me thin and healthy? How, what do I do at night that makes me thin and healthy? So we, we, we go more granular in. I think the idea of just imagining yourself thin and healthy every day, that ain't going to do shit. Nope. Nope. Not seen that work. I've tried, I've tried everything folks. Okay. I've been doing this for 20 years. Started off just like all the other hypnotists, reading a script. I remember the first session I ever did 15 minutes of reading a script, you know, and um, it's just so funny where I'm at now. So, so yes, we, we, we get delusional because we start imagining ourselves the way we want to be, but not just the end result. We also imagine along the way, what things do we need to do? Let me imagine myself eating the way that I need to eat, you know, so we get more granular with it. Very important. Um, now I, Ni I want to say Naomi. Is that how we say that? It looks like it's spelled a little different than Naomi. N Naomi. Either way, either way. Um, that's awesome. Take a screenshot of that. I got so many screenshots of people just listen to me. You know. By the way, that's always say, folks. Again, I'm not here to sell the program, but if you are able to invest in the program, I can promise you that will be the most valuable investment you've ever made in your health, um, your weight, and in your happiness. Ultimately. You know, so make sure you go, by the way, go to my bio, click the link at the hypnosis session. I give you, it's free. It's called the new thin me. It's a kickstart session. Um, and watch the training I give you three steps to master your weight. Um, where I lay out the whole process, you know, I talk about the program, but, but it, I, all that is just pure content. Please watch it. It's <laughs> it makes me crazy. I try to get people to do this every day. Cause it's like, if you're struggling with your weight, you don't need to. You're only struggling with your weight because you don't know what to do. You don't know how to influence your thinking, your feeling, your behaviors. You don't have a strategy for that. You're just trying to change everything with willpower. You know, Kira said you just saved me so much time. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's what I'm here for. Oh, okay. It is Naomi. Okay. That's cool. It is spelled different, right? Because isn't Naomi usually like N A I O M I? Um, sailor says, I can't wait to check out your podcast. I need your voice instead of my parents voice stuck in my head. That's what I look to do. Cause think about this, right? So let's talk about voices in your head. <laughs> Cause that's my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is voices in, in the head, right? Um, because in the hypnosis world, we always say you are your own best or worst hypnotist, right? Because you're up in your head talking to yourself all day and night, but that voice that you're hearing, unfortunately is usually a parent voice and not listen. Parents are good. Okay. I'm a parent. I'm, I'm defending parents here because everyone, everything's good and bad. But a lot of times the voice we get in our head is the kind of the shitty parent voice, right? When they're busting our chops or yelling at us, or making us feel bad. And we internalize that. And now that's how we talk to ourselves. 
And so when it comes to weight loss, most people's inner voice is this very negative, harsh, critical voice that makes them feel like shit. And so my goal for my clients, certainly, and for you as well, is to become the supportive, encouraging, um, coaching voice inside your head during this process. So that when you make a food mistake, you don't say, oh, there you go, you fat shit. You, you deserve, you know that mean voice you have and how fucking mean you are to yourself? I don't want you to do that. I want you to hear my voice and say, it's okay. Let's say, hey, what was going on there? Why do we do that? And how do we change it up next time? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, calm down, relax. It's okay. We all make mistakes. You're learning to do things better. And the more encouraging, supportive voice you have in your head, the faster and the better your results are going to be. You know, no doubt about it. <laughs> that I can guarantee you. Um, there's a, yeah, it's spelled differently. Many people get confused. Yeah, sure. It's cool. Though. I like it. It's, it is kind of cool. Like it's spelled different. That's neat. So it's spelled different, but it sounds the same. I like that even better. That's cool. That's like, um, I don't know why it made me think of this, but I always say like Chipotle. I always mix that one up. Chipotle, Chipotle. I always get that one in my head. I mix it up. But uh, anyways, all right, you want to get out of here? I got to go. I got to prepare. I got a coaching call today. My program, again, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have live coaching calls. Um, so yeah, if you're serious about your weight loss, you got some money to invest. That's the program to get. If you can work with me for eight weeks, um, twice a week, I'll turn your ass around <laughs> for sure. And it's valuable to hear with other people as well. So that, that's a fun, that's a fun program. That's a fun call that we have uh, twice a week. So, um, all right, everyone. Yeah. Again, the podcast, right? I got a podcast program yourself. Then it's on all the major platforms. Um, and one thing I'm going to do, I don't know if you guys will be interested in this is if you're all on Facebook, uh, I was going to start a, I have a group. I've kind of just, ah, it's kind of languishing, I would say, but I have a, a program yourself then group that I was going to start live streaming these into there as well. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, I don't know. I'll see. I'll see what goes on there. It's there. It's called PYT spark. Um, anyways, so what'll happen though, is that you can watch the trainings in there and they'll be there, whether you see them live or not, you can watch them live in there. And then if they're not there, they'll be there to, for, for you to watch anyways, something I'm kind of thinking about. Um, but anyway, so the podcast is program yourself. Then on all the platforms. The program's called program yourself. Then, um, but make sure is to go to my, my TikTok bio, click the bio, um, get the hypnosis session, the new thin me and watch the training I give you. And I email you every day. I give you some really good, positive stuff as well. So, all right, everyone, super. You, I appreciate all your, all your, uh, your, your messages today is your coaching call where to buy it. Um, yeah, the, the coaching calls, they come with the program. So if you, I would suggest watching the training first. So if you go to my bio, get the hypnosis session, it takes a couple minutes to, to, process it. And so in the meantime, I send you right to a page to watch a training and I'd suggest watching that training. Um, and then I talk about the program there and I give you a special deal on it. Um, and, or you can go to program yourself thin.com and you can go to the program thing and, uh, you have the option to, you can learn about it and you can, uh, sign up for it there. And there, again, there's a version with coaching and a version without coaching. If you're able to, I strongly suggest the coaching because again, being able to have me and especially right now, because, hey, it's a slow time of year. We all know this, right? So get in there before the January rush, right? And uh, I, I I keep it small anyways, because I um, I spend a lot of time with you. You know what I mean? We do Zoom calls every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. And it's an opportunity for me to work directly with you. And again, it's a, it's a deal of the century in the sense that, you know, my private coaching is 25 grand. Um, and this group coaching is going to go up to two grand. So um, it's, a, it's a good deal right now, you know, um, if, if that's something you're interested in. Um, and if that's just kind of out of your price range, oh, thanks, Jody. I appreciate you saying that. So Jody's in it. Yep. And she said, it's amazing. Um, it really is. Cause again, not only do I get to work with you, but in the group format, you get to hear other people and that's very valuable. I've been doing this group coaching for about a year and, um, people really enjoy being able to listen to other people as well, because, you know, listen, everyone's, everyone's struggles at the end of the day are pretty much all the same. You know what I mean? They show up a little bit differently, but at the core, it's always the same thing. And so be able to hear this mindset approach, you know, person after person in different contexts is very, very valuable. Um, and again, there's replays of everything as well. But um, yeah, it, it's 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 a tremendous value, you know, because again, I think um, one thing I'm able to do is I'm not, well, you know, if you think about every weight loss person out there, they're always telling you what to do. And I am helping you to do it. And I think that's what sets me apart from, from most weight loss methods out there is that I'm kind of meeting you with where you're at and kind of walking you along to get to a new place, if that makes sense. 
um, where a lot of people are just kind of telling you what to do and then you're just left on your own, you know? And I think that, um, having someone kind of guide you along it. It's funny. I, I thought my, my daughter is, she's taking calculus and it's an online class and there's not really like a teacher and it, it's never been more obvious, right? The value of having like a teacher right there when you're working with them is when you get stuck, they can see right where you're stuck and kind of bring you to the next step, you know? And so to learn it on our own is very difficult. You know, it's very, very difficult. I, I'd say this is not a good class <laughs> to teach it this way um, because, again, you don't have someone right there with you seeing where you're stuck and, and then being able to move you forward. And that's the problem, folks. You know, don't say that shit. The guy, the dyer's thing, you know what they always say? Like, oh, I know what I got to do, Jim. I just got to get myself to do it. No, you know, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to get yourself to do it. That's the problem. You know, having some vague idea of how you should eat or what you should do is not having the understanding of how to get yourself to do it, you know, and um, having someone there, you know, again, this is what I do is I, I can see where people are stuck because there's always this subconscious programming that's keeping you stuck. Um, let me give you an example of what I mean. If you close one eye and look at your nose, you see it. Close the other eye and look at your nose, you see it. Open both eyes, your brain deletes your nose. Okay. So a lot of the problems, the challenges, and the solutions that are right in front of you, you are literally just not seeing them. Your brain has deleted them from your awareness. So it's very helpful to have someone from a different perspective who understands this, obviously, that can communicate with you to help make you aware of things that are right in front of you. And I, you wouldn't believe it until you actually saw it. So often, the solutions I'm able to help people uncover are things that were right in front of them the whole time, you know? And so it's not complicated solutions. A lot of times it's obvious stuff that we're just missing. And you know this because like, if you have a friend who's struggling with weight, like you're able to come up with all these solutions and answers, right? Because you have a different perspective. You know what I mean? You're in a different mindset. You're not, you know, freaking out like they are about it. So you're able to access more kind of information and wisdom in yourself. Um, but when it comes to you thinking about your own situation, you're stuck. You just feel stuck, right? And so again, I'm able to help people um, not only because I have a different perspective, because I've been doing this. I've done over 5,000 private weight loss sessions. So anyways, all right, everyone. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a super day and we will talk soon. Bye.